Uh, checking. Okay. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, thanks for coming. This is the talk about Caden Live and just video editing in general, but specifically with Caden Live. I'm going to do beginner stuff as well as some advanced stuff, as more of a demonstration of the advanced stuff that you can do in Caden Live, not necessarily a like a like a full. I'll I'll, I'll explain one of the main advanced stuff I'm going to do, and I'm also going to show you how I speed up my production and it just there's certain tips that you can do to make it easier to use Caden Live. So. Uh, I'm Michael Tunnell of, of uh, Destination Linux and Tux Digital, and this talk is a guide to learn uh, the beginners to an experience usage, usage of Kden Live. So, um, if you, for those of you who don't know who I am, as I said, I'm Michael Tunnell, and I'm one of the hosts of Destination Linux, and the creator of and host of This Week in Linux, and I create various other Linux-related videos on TuxDigital.com. Both of these podcasts use video, uh, video based and is so I have a lot of practice in video editing. But then by the way, you can check out the website uh, by going to uh, michaeltonnell.com, destinationlinux.org, tuxdigital.com. And so the first of all, I just want to get started by asking a couple questions. So how many of you have used uh, Caden Live before? Okay, nice. How many have uh, never used any video editing? Okay. So I'm going to do a couple of the, of the, of a, kind of demonstration of like the basics, and then I'll go into some more, you know, extra features and stuff. So the timeline here is um, is, is actually going to be uh, different because this is the 1904 version. I also have the 1812 version loaded up to show it uh, because some things in 1904 are much better and some things make it crash. So, um, so we're going to, I'm going to show you what a really cool transition thing, but it, doesn't work in 1904 yet, uh, and I didn't know that until about 20 minutes ago. So that's why 1812 is up for it. Uh, but anyway, so this timeline is actually pretty. Uh, it's pretty useful. It's going to be difficult to do it with one hand, but um, like the, the best thing about this uh, st structure is that it's super keyboard friendly. The this version is more keyboard friendly than the last one. You have um, basically the, the the used to just have to right click. You had to right click the uh, context menu and choose these things. Uh, now you can specify uh, shortcuts for each individual thing on the context menu, as well as pretty much any effect or any uh, feature inside of Caden Live now. So that's one of the main reasons that 1904 is going to be a good, you know, solution as soon as they fix those bugs of the crashing part. Uh, but uh, for the most part, I think it's 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 pretty much good to go right now. Uh, and also, the new timeline structure is really cool because if you have a problem and you tell them about it. Depending on the severity of the problem, they will fix it pretty quickly. I had a really annoying bug uh, a couple weeks ago, and I told them about it, and then the next day it was fixed. That didn't really help me for that particular edit because I had to do it that day, but it's still pretty cool that they did it. So uh, the, next, um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, not on that window, but I needed to fix this. There we go, that fixes it. All right, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is some um, extra differences when you use the timeline. So the previous version, when you pulled a video that had audio on it, the audio would be as attached to that video clip. And this one, they don't do it that way. They actually make it where it pulls the, the audio automatically off of it. And so you can see there's two different clips, but they're actually linked together. So if you didn't want to have the audio, you'd have to unlink them and then delete the audio piece. It's not actually that, uh, it's, it's, it's not required to do this though. You can actually go into the section over here and change the layout back to the old way if you wanted it to. But this is the new way of doing it. And they've also redesigned the overall look of the timeline because this, this way, the way they do the, uh, the audio thumbnails it's much better because it has better contrast. As you can see, when you, when you zoom in, uh, you can get better detail of, what, of, of the, the peaks and everything. So the previous version had some issues where sometimes you couldn't really tell what exactly the, the audio thing was doing because sometimes it would show you the wrong waveform. It would show you uh, not enough of the waveform, and it, wouldn't, and it, was kinda be, it would kind of be uh, bundled together. So this is a much better way of doing it. So there are, there are differently benefits to 1904. 
Uh, so as soon as the, the thing is completely stable, it'd be great. Uh, but anyway, this is a, uh, a one of the tips that they that they improved. I mean, and the overall thing that they've done as far as um, you know, changing functionality. If you've used KDLive before, is they changed the context menu a lot. So when you right-click a clip, you used to be able to um, go down to the Add Effect and then just choose whatever effect you wanted to. You can't do that anymore. They've actually set it up where it's only going to show you favorites, and it's not difficult to add a favorite. But it is kind of weird that it's both a, a good thing and a bad thing. Because if you were used to doing it, it's going to change your workflow. If you never did it in the first place, it was gonna, it's going to save you time because you're just going to get the things you're going to normally use. So it depends on how much you've used it and whether you've developed a workflow or not. But overall, I think that's a, a good thing to have anyway. So this, OK, very directional, apparently. Um, I was just saying that the context menu, when you have the, uh, you have to change, you have to set up the favorites for your, for your workflow rather than it used to having every effect and every composite option in the context menu now. So you can still have effects and composites, but you have to put them in yourself. Or you have to choose the which ones you want to have access to. But uh, the next thing I want to do is talk, kind of do like a, a beginner tour about the different features of it. So the first off, we're going to use the select tool, which is actually the default. So the select tool is just this right here. And that's the regular mode of being able to select clips. It's not really that important. It's more of like the default because it's just the most normal usage of it. But there are other tools that you can change, like the mode. There's the razor tool. And the razor tool allows you to randomly you know, cl cut clips like that. Then there's the spacer tool, which allows you to move clips based on the track. That's not what I'm trying to do. OK. Based on the track, and then you can just move around like that and it'll also the one of the reasons the spacer tool is really cool because if you pick to move certain clips it will move everything behind it as well so it'll save you time in that sense in the same way of trying to pull it back as well uh, but when it turns to the razor tool you can completely ignore it like it exists but it's super slow and not worth it because the select tool actually has a feature that you can do that without having to worry about it so this this arrow thing is called the playhead now, you don't actually have to use the razor tool to r hopefully guess with your mouse where it is. You just put it frame by frame where you want it to cut, hit Shift R, and it cuts it, or exactly where the playhead is. So it saves a ton of time, and you skip that whole mode completely. And then there's other options where you can just, once you have that, you just select the clip, then hit the delete key, and you're super quick cutting. So that is the, one of the good ways to speed up your production because it allows you to skip all that. Now, the next thing I want to show about the beginner tour is, tool is that there's something about uh, Caden Live that is not very obvious, and they don't really promote it, but it's super helpful. So if you're doing something that's really extravagant, like a lot of effects or something, and a lot of effort, and then you're trying to play it back, Caden Live is not accelerated very well, so it's not going to give you a good, like a full preview, like an accurate preview. So it's going to jitter a little bit and have some buffering, and it's not going to work that well. So what we want to do is put, where, put the playhead where you want it to start the effect, hit I, and then put it where you want to end, and then it just hit O, like input output, and it creates a preview zone. And then when you go to the render, it'll ask you options, and one of those options is the select, the select zone, or in some cases, like the older version says preview zone. So you can just do that one piece of, part of the zone that you want, and it will allow you to render the effect, test to see if it worked very well, and then go back to do the rest of the edit. It saves, it'll save a ton of time, but you don't have to you know, edit, record or do a bunch of like rendering of like a four-hour thing or whatever, and it takes forever to do it. You can just do this one piece and then go back. So that saves a lot of time. Now, another thing that I think is very useful about the timeline for Caden Live is the ability to remove uh, m remove space. So, so you can see this part right here. It's just if you want to pull one clip to the other, you can go to the uh, spacer tool, which can be useful at times, but also it can be slow. So you can just right click, and then there's options here. One of them is remove on active track, and one is remove space. If you click remove space, it will pull back 
the clip to where is the next snap point, and then it will do the next clip, pull everything behind it and leave it in the same proportions of where it was, and you pull it with it. Or you could do the the right click and choose the active track, and it will leave everything on every other track alone. So you can choose to do this. And the weird thing about some of the stuff in Caden Live is that there are stuff in the shortcuts where their labels different. So for example, the remove space says is remove space means the remove on the active track. Whereas on the right the context menu it means all the tracks. Then the other option to just do the the full all tracks inside of the shortcuts says all tracks. So it's a you have to pay attention to what your setting is going to be the right one because it's kind of mislabeled. And I think that's from the previous version where it used to they used to have the same styling they just changed the context menu. Now the other one is that if you ha there's a really cool feature that for some reason is not active by default in Caden Live. You have to go in and ma manually do it. Uh, there's a shortcut that allows you to create a screenshot of the frame that you're looking at and it will automatically create that clip. You can put it in your folder or you can make it go to your project bin automatically. And they, and they have the weird labeling thing for that too. So what you, when you say I want to put it in the project, it puts it in the folder. If you want to put it in the folder, it puts it in the project. So you need to you know, pay attention to that part. Hopefully they'll fix it pretty soon, but that's the, one of the issues that I've noticed and for that kind of thing. So there's lots of d different benefits to using the, like, if, as far as speeding up, but the shortcuts are the most powerful because like, you, you should, ch I mean, I don't really like the defaults of how they have the shortcuts because they're kind of awkward in some cases. But once you change them up a little bit, it makes it a lot easier. So one of the things I did want to show you is that when you want to go frame by frame, you do uh, left and right. If you want to go one second at a time, you hold shift and go left and right. But the, ne the most powerful one is the alt and left and right. And that is the clips, the, the snap clips jump. So you actually go in the front end of every clip and also the preview zones. So you can do that. And it saves a ton of time to jump back and forth. So that's one of the best things about uh, the navigation for the timeline is that it makes it so easy to navigate through it without having to worry about it. Now there are some bugs here and there for the 1904. Like for example, I'm not on the screen anymore. So the timeline didn't travel with me. And that's a bug that I've seen. It, it pops up here and there. It doesn't always happen, but every once in a while in 1904 it does happen. So you have to uh, basically scroll with your mouse wheel to get to it. And that's fairly unfortunate, but this is one feature you can also do is Alt and then Home, which I can't do with one hand, so I'll just tell you what it does. So Alt and Home will take you from the beginning and the end of the entire project. Or into, so Alt, Home, Alt, N, beginning, and then end. And these, these, the Home and End key also apply to the same Alt thing. So if you're wanting to go this way, let's say you can, you can actually skip the preview zone if you use the home and end key. And it allows you to just, it basically does the same process that the alt and the left and right do, but it's still, it's still useful at times because uh, it's faster. If you're on a keyboard that doesn't have a function key, then the home key, you have a dedicated thing, it's easier to just hit that sometimes. So that's the, that's some of the speed up process. Now there's, there's things that I do that I can't really Ex like explain in the talk because it requires special equipment. Like if, for example, I have a custom keyboard that is like a macro keyboard, so I have really custom shortcuts that are stupid, like um, Super Alt F3 or something like that. And there's no reason to do those, but the reason I have them is because it allows me to customize everything in here to my setup for my keyboard and also not have to worry about any conflict with anything else because nothing else uses those weird shortcuts. So, except for Plasma has weird shortcuts, but that's not important. So, th this is, this, it makes it possible to have uh, really quick modifications. So, I have a keyboard that's like a small one-handed macro keyboard. So, I'm just m switching back and forth between every little piece. So, I al it allows me to have do like the Alt-Left on one key so I can go super fast to do everything. So, that's one of the things that uh, like makes my workflow super fast is that. Uh, and then I wanted to t show you some 
uh, some effects as well as some ideas of how I do editing. And then one of the things that is super useful in editing is the guides tool. Now, there are shortcuts by default, um, but I don't remember what they are, actually, because I have a custom keyboard for it as well. And it's on the timeline. Yeah, it's the guides here. And when you add a guide, what it does is puts a guide right here. And this guide will allow you to, you know, not have to have a clip there and still be able to go use the alt and left key to jump to that guide. And that saves a ton of time in the, as well because it allows you to put, like, pre-set up what cuts you want to do and then go in and make the cuts. So, for example, when I do Destination Linux editing, I have an automation tool where I am, while we're editing, I'll have a timestamp that I'm, while in the, during the, well, not while I'm editing, while we're recording the show, I have, a, the macro has a timestamp being a recording of the time of when we started the recording. And I hit the button to, to apply a timestamp. And then from there, I make an automation thing where I take the timestamp and turn it into a guide in Caden Live. So when I open Caden Live to edit Des Destination Linux, all of the edit points are already set for me because I have an automatic set for the guides. Uh, one of the, the cool things about the 1904 version of the guides is that you have a lot more customization, which is the, the 1804 is very limited, though. Apparently, this is also a limited, but in the automation aspects of it, you can choose what you want. You can choose the color of the guides. You can also choose to give it names. So I have an automatic thing where if I make a mistake, then I put myself as the edit point. If Ryan totally screws up, like always, I, uh, I, put, a, I put a message saying, this is where Ryan screwed up the entire show and you have to fix it. So uh, there, there's things like that that happen, and I think that the, if once you get used to the process, you'll get its really quick process. It's a super fast production time. But it does take a while to get used to all of the settings. It's, it's KDE, so that's one, yeah, you know, everybody gets that. Like that, you're, you're used to the, the super crazy settings anyway. So, uh, my, my, my method is super custom, and I do have some scripts that I'm going to put on GitHub that won't allow you to use everything that I have, but I will show you this, this, the, how, the structure of how I have it so that you could recreate it if you want to. But it's not like going to be a plug and play thing because you have to have the exact keyboard I have. You have to have all this other stuff. You also have to have Ryan mess up your show in order to fix it. And uh, what? So the, the next thing I want to talk about is some effects that you can do in Caden Live. And this is... Uh, a this is called a matte transition video. Now this video is apparently it looks like it's just basically nothing. So it's a transparent background video. So what you do is you see these white things pop up, and it, it basically looks like it's nothing special because it's just this weird video playing. But what it's actually doing is this. So it allows you to transition from one video to another video with that transition video. And the transparency effect allows you to reveal the, net, the below video through that structure. So you can make that animation be anything you want it to be. And it allows you to uh, basically have any kind of transition, not just a fade, not just a whatever. You can make it custom to the layout and landscape of it. Like for example, there's sometimes where I saw, uh, there's a, a, a guy I helped do some uh, work with he did a, some, a video shoot on a mountain. I'm not going to go up to that mountain, but I can make a transition so it looks great where it kind of like fades along the mountainside while they're skiing, and then it shows the next scene. Like, that's a pretty cool effect. And the way you do it is this process. So the first clip you want to have in the, dis in the display of it, you want to use at the very bottom of the track. Then you want the next clip on top of it, and the, however long the mat transition is, that's, you just have to deal with however long it is, so you have to know where you're going to cut. So you do have to prepare if you're going to use these. Uh, and then you just set up a matte transition to apply to auto, and then set that on the top of everything. So it has to go from the, the one you start with, then the next level you want to go to, and then the transition on top of that 
that will compensate and, and uh, then do, deploy, apply all its magic. So that's a, a, a different situation in like, that a lot of people are not going to be using, but it's a really cool effect that you can do as an advanced tool in Caden Live. And, and this is the example I was talking about where it would crash the new one. So I attempted to try it three times, and we're like, okay, it's crashing literally every time. So here's 18.12 where it doesn't crash. So this is a good example of the preview render as well. So when it starts doing it, it's not going to be able to do it very well. So it's just going to jitter and stuff, and it, you, can, you can see it's happening, but you're, it's not a good representation. So that's why you would use the preview render for that. And, or just make a tiny video and just put it there. You could also do that if you wanted to. So I think Caden Live has a lot of benefits. I think that it's overall it's a great t uh, tool to use, and I think that over if you wanted to, you could customize it to do basically anything you want except render fast. Be yeah, because it, some, depending on how long your video is, it could be forever. Uh, I, occasionally, I'll have it where the video for Destination Linux takes four or five hours. And that's just because if you do stuff like this, you do extra, eff 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 extra effects, it's going to add a lot of time. Um, there is a technically possible thing. Uh, this is an advanced tip as well. I'm not going to show you because I don't, I'm not team green and I care about my hardware and open source. So uh, there's a feature in team green that, ha that NVENC exists, and you can apply NVENC in, open, in, K in Kden Life, but you can't really do it very well exactly because you have to you have to also install shotcut take the library features of shotcut and then impl implement them inside of Kden live so it's a really weird way of doing it but it's technically possible so uh, if you wanted to do it that'll speed up your renders and nothing else just the render and uh, it's it is useful but uh, they are working on video acceleration for just the itself so you the AMD improvements will be coming in a future release when I have no idea but I'm a huge fan of Kden Live because of how much power it gives you by default it looks kind of cumbersome if you were to use OpenShot it's a lot easier it's more of a like a, a iMovie or a Windows Movie Maker approach but this one has so much more power and it can do a lot more and a lot faster that I am just a big fan of using the of using Kden Live for the most most part there are a ton of different things you can do. There are a ton of different features I haven't talked about. And unfortunately, there's just too much to discuss as far as like going through each effect and each thing that you can use. But the, the best thing about uh, Kden Live is that it also has, not best thing, there's a ton of great things, but one of the best things about Kden Live is it has a lot of key frameable aspects. And that allows all your effects to be able to apply a key a keyframe to your effect and then change the effect in the keyframe directly on the clip. So I don't have a preview of showing you that because I just thought of to tell you right now. And uh, the keyframe, uh, you just go into the, the effect panel, which would be right up here, uh, just right up here. And then you just choose, like, you, here's one order keyframe. You, you add a keyframe button, then you change the value, go to the next part of the video, Add a keyframe button, change the value to whatever else you want, whatever whatever else you want, and that makes you get, it allows you to do audio changing, some transformation changes, and all kinds of uh, opacity settings and whatever you want. Keyframing is available in uh, Kden Live, and it works quite well. Now there are also like a lot of effects like chroma keying and a ton of things that you have to have equipment to make it work. But for the most part, the majority of what you would want to do in Kden Live is totally possible and totally easy to do once you know how the shortcuts work because they're a little esoteric and odd. But are there any questions as far as, you know, Kden Live? Right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about like the coloring grading? Yeah. So there's, there's the, the best way to do it is to do it separately. So you want to have, have the video side by side and try to figure out what color grading you want to do, and then edit that one video to get the color grading correct. The, you, and I would say that the best way to do it is in Kden Live because it does have color grading in it. Um, as far as open source wise, like you could use Lightworks and it'd probably be a lot easier because uh, Lightworks does have a, a, a really good color grading system inside of it. 
but Caden Live is the best open source approach to it. So I would say use Caden Live to d do the editing of individually of that color grading, not in the full project. Because if I was, if I needed to do that, because there's sometimes, I don't know if I, you specifically chose the color blue, but there's a couple episodes where Destination Linux where my face is blue a lot from a wallpaper. And uh, the choice to fix it is to go in and color grade my video and then re-render that section and put it into the podcast and re-render the whole podcast. So the method I used was to ignore it. And yeah. So any, any other questions? You have to find them. The transition effect is is built into Caden Live. The actual animation itself is not a Caden Live thing. That is a video that you there's a ton of different uh, presets because this the one of the cool things about that style of transition is that it is uh, it's very popular and also works in literally every editor that has the ability to do matte transitions. So any any editor that has compositing or full compositing can do that. So if you have some if you find a template that is for uh, Premiere Pro or you know Final Final Cut or whatever, it will still work. It doesn't matter what kind of video it is as long as it is a a transition video where it has white color for the, the animations coming in and then transparent background for everything else. Uh, Zeb? Do you mean, do I have a list of my things or do I have a things in the notes or whatever? That's a good question, and there will be, when I post it online, there will be, yes. Like right now, no, but there will be. So There's multiple libraries and stuff, so they don't work for anything. You got another one? Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, good good question because I totally forgot to do that. Because uh, there's a super easy uh, when I was explaining the the alt left and alt whatever. If you have if you want to take a video and then do an outtake, you want to put it all the way at the end. If you just click the clip, hold it down, and hit Control End, it will move your timeline all the way to the end, and then you just let go of the clip, and it'll be at the end. Yeah, so it's, it'll take uh, like two seconds. Yeah. There's another question over here. I do. More than likely, it will, because of the benefit of uh, uh, because of the NVENC support for the encoding. It, it could use that. Uh, it's technically possible to do it, and they have discussed whether they're going to be able to like allow you to choose it as a preset for the render. Uh, so you're, they're going to not necessarily a preset, but like the variable parameters, you can add that to it. They're talking about adding it as an option, but they haven't done it yet. So I don't know if they're actually going to, because they haven't verified whether they will. But they have discussed it. That's true too. And also, just rendering and if you don't have hardware acceleration, rendering is a is a chore. Unless you have a thread ripper, then it's amazing. I don't have one of those, but I've seen it done. So. Oh wow. Okay. So have I ever used Cinelera, and why do I hate it? Okay, so I can give you a re I don't hate it, but it is an awkward editor, and not in the sense of how you use it. The, the problem with the, with the Cinelera I found is that there are way too many Cineleras. There's like five different versions of Cinelera. And when I t promote a, a particular application and I go, well, Cinelera is great, and they're like, well, which one do I get? Because this one didn't work. Well, you have to get this one that's a fork of this fork and this fork. And that's why I don't really like to promote Cinelera because 
if it's it's a pretty good tool. I would say it's on par with KDE in many ways, uh, or Kden Live. I mean, and I don't think it's not necessarily a bad editor. I just think that they need to rebrand it, and whoever has the latest community version, because there's like a CV version or something, like that needs to just be rebranded and get rid of the name Cinelera, get anything else, because it doesn't. It's just it's too complicated for even for technical people to find it because uh, it's not worth the effort, really. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. You can definitely never, never even suggest such a horrible thing. Um, <laughs> So, uh, the question about the the the, the K, is in a Larry question? Is that what you're talking about? No, I think he was asking about the uh, art. Okay. Uh, so I think that the, the, maybe the question was about the uh, the open shot aspects and the yeah the different editors. Yeah, there's a lot of different editors that are in uh, Linux, and there's a lot of open shot editors, which is weird because we have. We, we have like one option for a solid email client on the desktop, and we have like 15 video editors. Um, so like I'm not sure why they're focusing on that, but whatever. But there's OpenShot is an interesting thing because it's, it's got some cool features. The blender structure that they have for the automated animation titles, that's a really cool feature. But there are some issues with OpenShot in the sense that it has, uh, it's missing a lot of features that, I, that are pr production wise are necessary. Like it doesn't have most of the effects that are in Caden Live. It doesn't have quick jumps as well as good as Caden Live has. Uh, it's a, it's in some, some versions is a little crashy, that's true. But also, you know, it happens in all of them. But uh, there's different benefits to all of them. Uh, I think Shotcut is a really good editor too. If you want to check it out, it's it's a uh, it's a very unique method of editing. Uh, but the r the reason why Shotcut is worth checking out is it's a workflow that kind of feels natural. So if you want to do a transition on Caden Live, you basically put a clip over another clip and then hit the corner of one of the clips, whichever one's on top, and then it'll transition to the next one. And that's kind of awkward, but it works fine. It, with uh, with shortcut, you just kind of drag the clip, hover it over a little bit, drop it, and it creates the animation automatically. Like that's a pretty cool feature. So it feels more natural. But at the same time, the rendering it needs work. So the rendering issue is that if you want to have a really high quality thing, you have to tweak it all the time. And when it exports, sometimes it'll export really slowly, and the file will be gigantic. I've had times where I rendered something in Caden Live, took the exact same work, I'm, and then built another thing in, in Shotcut. Shotcut took three times longer, and the file was four times larger, for no apparent reason, really, because they both used the same uh, rendering and coding system in the back end, which is MLT. And the other thing that is kind of odd about that is the guy who makes MLT also makes Shotcut, so that shouldn't happen. But it, that's what it, for me, in my experience, is what it does. So that there are all of the, a lot of options, but I think Caden Live is the most well-rounded option of all of them, as far as the open source options. If you want to talk about Lightworks or DaVinci Resolve, which is terrible, uh, yeah, there's there's t there's tons of different uh, features or options if you want to check them out. But I think Caden Live is by far the best once you learn all of the weird shortcuts and st structures because some of, they don't even make any sense pretty much at all. Back there, I can't really hear you. Yeah. How long would it take to be efficient in Caden Live? Okay. Um, or what, what are you moving from? Yeah. Like Premiere? Okay. So, okay. The trend, it depends on what they do. If they use Premiere in the sense that some people use Photoshop in the sense that they use it because they don't, they just, think it's, 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 they're told it's the best and therefore they use it, but they don't really use, utilize anything that's super special to Premiere, then it's a pretty easy transition. But uh, if they've been using it for a certain amount of time, the transition 
of shortcuts are going to be completely different because there's not a single shortcut that's similar. Well, okay, the only one that's similar is the delete key to remove a track. That's it. Everything else is some weird decision. Like if you want to cut a clip, uh, like I showed you earlier, where you just go to the end, go to use the, if you're actually on the thing, you move the playhead around and you use the, the, the shift R is the shortcut. What does R, shift R have to do with cutting something? I don't know, but that's what they did for, for some reason. Yeah, but it's, you're not on the razor tool. That's the one that's kind of weird. But that's a good point. It, it, it's, it's a fair point. Uh, but the razor tool you can just ignore, and like I said, because that's way faster and more accurate. And also one of the biggest features of any kind of editor is having the, like if a lot of people would kind of argue, dis disagree with this point, but I think if you're going to zoom on a timeline, the video track is irrelevant to that zoom. The only thing that matters is the audio track and the audio thumbnail. So you want to be able to zoom in exactly where you want to cut that audio. And the newest version of Caden Live has that built into it much better because of the how there's the contrast is so much better. So when you zoom into it, it makes it a lot easier. So that's why if you look at the thing, it's basically the, the video track is worthless. It's just a small thumbnail. You don't care about that. But that audio track, you can be very precise on the edit. And if you don't have the audio track, you're just basically guessing. So there's some editors that don't have audio thumbnail waveforms, which is basically, in my opinion, makes that editor not even worth bo bothering. Is there any more questions? There you go. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean by. Oh um, no, not in Caden Life. Not that I'm aware of. Mm hmm. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's a good question. I totally forgot about that. Should have been in the thing. So, proxy clips are very important, and for some reason, by default in 1904, they are turned off. So, turn them on as soon as you start using Caden Live, because they should be. Essentially, a proxy clip is a uh, a, f a way to sort of pre-render in a smaller um, a smaller file size that fits good in this preview mode. So this preview mode is never going to be your full project size unless you full screen and you're just going to do a, like a little quick look at it. Uh, so the proxy clips will sort of do a pre-render and make it like a 480p video or a 360p video or whatever. And it allows you to speed up the timeline of the playback so it doesn't have any negative effect of, you know, your buffering, your stu uh, stuttering options. But by default, it is off for some reason. So turn it on immediately. Um, sort of. The, the, the answer is yes and no. Um, I should go back to. You can kind of do it that way. There is a, a technically a way to do multi-cam editing, but it's not really a full multi-cam editing. That's why I'm saying it's yes and no. So if you set up this, uh, that's also a good question. Another thing that I meant to talk about, thank you. So right here is the multi-track view. And now this is a black thing. It's a black workspace. Just trust me, that's what it is. So this section is that track, the top track. So you can do a side-by-side, -side, or if you have multiple tracks, you can have them in a grid, and it will show you all the tracks at once, and you can edit them all at once, but it won't render like this. So you, if you wanted to have it in this structure, you still have to go back and put them in the right position and everything. It's still only a single layer structure of the render. So uh, if you render it this way, you'll just see the black, the black color clip, and that's it. So once you, this is just more of a preview while you edit. Once you render, you have to do extra steps to do that. And it is possible to create some kind of extra special effect to move it by doing a transform. So I can show you what the, the transform effect is. Not in this version, because it's not a favorite. So let me go here. That has all of them. So you go to the crop and transform, then you go to the transform option. And here, it gives you the option to choose the pixel size, the location by, by X and Y pixels, 
and you can choose the, the size overall or just percentage wise if you wanted to. So, and then you, we're here you can control like a quick snap. So you want to go to the top left, the top right, you know, bottom left, center, whatever. That kind of thing allows you to quickly do it. So basically the best option, let's say you have a video and you want to do, a, you have four, four videos you want into a grid style. You would actually say uh, resize the, with this transform tool into 50% and then put it to which corner you want it to be and then stack them on top of each other and then you're done. So it, it actually is possible to do the, to do the editing but uh, render with a different effect. But the problem with that mainly is that the effect adds a lot of render time because you're, you're adding a full effect to all of the different clips to render everything on the full project. So while it will work, it will pretty much double the render time, whatever it is. Uh, so it's technically possible, but not ideal. So, uh, yeah, they are sort of. They, they are listed a little bit, but not exactly. The 1812 is easier with shortcuts because they changed this stuff. Um, but the 1904 does have the shortcuts. The 1904 has improved the shortcuts by adding more things. Like, for example, in 1812, you can't do a shortcut for removing spaces. Like, you have to use the context menu. But it's not that bad because you just right click, hit a letter, and it would do it. Uh, so it's not terrible even in the older version. But the newest version, has uh, has it all set up where you can basically create a shortcut for anything you want. And the shortcuts are right here. You just configure shortcut. And you can choose everything from even opening the about menu for some reason. Uh, but you can, you can do all kinds of stuff in here. And they remove spaces in here. They remove all track space and whatever is in, all in here. And some of the stuff should be selected by default and have a default shortcut and doesn't. Uh, so some of these things I'm talking about, you would have to go in and add some shortcuts to it. And I can give you, uh, and when I post this video, along with the library suggested, I can pr provide uh, like a, a shortcut scheme or something if you want. It's just a configuration. You just go to config Kden Live, and it's one of the settings for encoding. Or no, for rendering. Not for timeline. It's in the timeline. Anyway, so yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of options in here, and there's the the, the shortcuts are super awesome. And once you get used to the shortcuts, Kden Live editing is super fast. In the very beginning of Kden Live, it's it's pretty awkward, and once you get used to the shortcuts, they're awkward too. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, oh, that's a good, uh, the, the, the project files are in XML, so you Yes. Absolutely. You can totally do that. You can take that, once you have everything done, as long as you have, the, the, the only thing about that is that the, um, the paths for Caden Live are hard-coded. In the, they're hard-coded in the XML. So if you have the path as, you know, on different folders or different locations and everything, or different drives, it makes it awkward to do that. But if it's all in the same subpath, you can do that. Because you can just make, you can just have a, uh, do like a project, like the, the way to do that, the most common solution is to have a home folder, folder specifically for editing, and then put everything in that folder. And then when you're done and you want to render it, just have a folder on the server and then have the same thing, you just have home editing, and it will automatically work fine. But if you have these files, on, like I sometimes edit on different drives. It's not necessarily a great idea, but it works fine because I'm lazy sometimes. But uh, it allows you to uh, do it that way if you have the path correct. Otherwise, it would kind of be awkward. You'd it wouldn't break it in impossibility. You could still uh, fix it by uh, making it search for finding those paths. So you can make it actually, if, you, if at any time you open a, a project file that says, uh, I can't find these clips, you, you, what do you want to do? It'll give you the option to find and search and find the replacement if wherever they w might be, trying to fix the path. Or you can abort it and just throw them out and replace them with like uh, color clip fillers. Or you can just delete them on the timeline. There's multiple options of doing it, but the, the best option 
is actually kind of unfortunate because if you have a the, if you want to have a render server, you also need to have X on that render server so you can look at that because that option is only available in the GUI. So if you do if your path does break, you need to have you have you have to know that you can go in and fix it. So you have to have a GUI set up for it. It doesn't matter what GUI it is or like what interface it is. It just needs to have one. You have to have X on the server for, if you want to render on a server. So like if you want to edit on your computer, send it up to a, like a server farm for the rendering, and then if you want, like, you don't have to do that necessarily to create the render, because you can render on the command line. But if you, anytime there's anything that messes up that you have to fix, you have to use the GUI to do it. Like it's super complicated with the XML to modify it. Like my modifications took me like a week to figure out how to make it work to do what I wanted with the guides. And uh, so you basically have to convert your timestamp into seconds, modify it, and put those into a guide XML, custom XML guide structure, and then you have to put them in a particular place in the XML format, otherwise it will break completely. So it's very fickle, and then when you change any clip information, it changes a ton of stuff. So like if you just take, like for that one color clip, you just drop a color clip in, it has modified the XML about 40 lines. So it's not really you know, automatable in that sense. But some aspects can be automated. And that's the, the example of, uh, of Destination Linux is that I automated the guide system because that's pretty simple and it allows me to more quickly edit even though there's not an automatic edit structure that way. You can't really do it automatically anyway. But that's fine because I can't really do automatic because uh, my co-hosts or don't typically stick to the schedule, the structure that I want. You know, it's, no, it's, <laughs> so I, I always want them to give me a couple seconds for editing, and they're like, yeah, we'll dilly do that. And like, oh, you hit the button to wait, so we're going to start right now. Okay, cool. Uh, but anyway, that, that works out totally fine in most cases. But the issue with that, uh, the issue with the automation is that it's so complicated in XML because it's super custom. It's not really automation friendly. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. Auto ducking, not exactly because that's more of an attenuation thing and it would have to kind of scan the entire clip and then try to check to see what levels you are. So it, it, would, be, it would need a normalize an automatic normalization? Not exactly, because you can do it across the whole clip and the whole track, too. So you, once you have your music, more than likely the music is not going to uh, you know, be that changing. You're just going to have a clip and it's just going to repeat and whatever. So you can actually right click the track and add an effect on the track. And you can add a keyframeable volume control on that track. And then it will, anything in the track will also uh, get that effect. So it's kind of automatic in that sense, but not in the sense of you just tell it and we'll just figure it out and do it for you. So it's it's not that uh, advanced there. I mean, like a, if you don't mind using two tools, you could probably do that in Reaper. Yeah. Bring both to it, so it, it does auto duck. Yeah, Reaper's a good option too. There's 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 quite a few ways to do it. Uh, Osin Audio is an also a good editor that does some normalization and some effect automation if you wanted to. But Reaper is definitely a more professional tool for it. So good suggestion there. Um, any more questions? All right, awesome. Uh, now, is anybody here from uh, the last year's uh, uh, talk that I gave? Okay, how, this one I would say was probably successful. <laughs> last year's was a complete disaster, really. Uh, there was technical problems and it wasn't my fault. I saved it, so I'm just saying. Uh, so I want to appreciate you all coming back and dealing with it again. So uh, the Caden Live redo part due, I guess. Uh, so thank you very much for coming, and I hope is is helpful. If you have any more questions after the after the, the talk, feel free to catch me in the hallway. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming.